properties that we Yeah, they share some of the properties with the in the TD integrals, but since we have now limits A and B, there are some more that need to be given, which are these ones. They are pretty logical, pretty obvious, so again, no need to memorize them, just try to understand how they work. For example, the first one, it says, uh, you have an integral of a function f of x between a and b. There is a way to invert the limits, to invert the limits in that, for example, instead of having from a to b, if you change the limits from b to a, whatever numbers you have, doesn't matter, then the whole solution of the integral is going to be now negative. <coughs> okay? Example. Let's say that I have the integral of x squared dx between 1 and 2. If I want to solve this one with the approach and everything, what will I do? What's the integral of x squared? Uh, x to the cube. Uh -huh, x to the cube over 3. And since I have limits, I need to evaluate from 1 to 2. So I do it, so it will be 8 over 3 minus 1 over 3, so it's equal to 7. Yeah? <laughs> if I were to apply the same integral, but instead of having from 1 to 2, it's from 2 to 1 of x squared dx, the integral is the same. The only difference is that the limits are changed. So since you have a subtraction now, the solution is going to be the negative of that value. Okay? You can say the whole process by just having the solution change the sign to the original one. Okay? This will have a lot more sense when we see applications for this. Number two is when you have a function an integral, when the limits are exactly the same from a to a, the answer to that integral is going to be always equal to zero. Why? Because when you subtract, you subtract the same numbers, so the answer goes to be zero. Number three, same one as we did uh, with the independent integral. When you have a coefficient to the function, you can just put the coefficient outside the integral. Okay? If necessary, but it's not mandatory. It's just sometimes it's needed, sometimes it's not. It depends on the process that you're doing. Number four, again, something I already know. When you have an addition or subtraction of, it, of functions in front of an integral, you can just separate the integral <coughs> without changing the values of the limits. Okay? F of x plus, g, plus minus g of x, you can separate into two or more integrals depending on how many parts you have. Number five is new. If you remember yesterday, I told you that a definite integral works if you have a continuous interval from a to b. So, if you want to have a value c, and that value c belongs to that interval, then you can separate that integral from a to b into two or more integrals, but having the c as the limit for those integrals. What do I mean by that? For example, if this was from 1 to 4, for example, the 3 belongs to that integral. Okay? So you could separate the integral from 1 to 3 and from 3 to 4 and then achieve the same answer. I'll give you an example. Let's say that I have uh, an integral from, let's say, 0 to 4 of the function 1 minus x squared dx. In this situation, we know that the value, let's say, 1 is between 0 and 4. So you could separate the integral from 0 to 1 from 1 minus x squared dx plus from 1 to 4 of 1 minus x squared dx because that one belongs to that interval and that function should be continuous between 0 and 4. If the function is not continuous, then it doesn't work. So the function should be continuous for that. Okay? I'm not going to solve it yet because we're going to do this seminar when we see areas below the curve, which will be next week, I think. Okay? Do you understand the properties? Yeah, they are pretty logical, pretty obvious. Fine. Okay, we're going to work with the activity a little. Activity 9.1, exercise 3.
which has to do with these properties. When there is this part only. Okay. For number three, it says given that the integral from 2 to 5 of the function f, which I don't know which function is going to be, but it's function f, is equal to minus 3. The integral from 5 to 9 of the function is 10. The integral from 2 to 5 of the function g of x is 5. The integral from 5 to 9 of the function g of x is equal to minus 7. What does that mean? It means that we don't have the functions but we have the solutions of the integrals to those functions at those values. For this one, the answer is minus 3. For this one, the answer is 10. For this one, the answer is 5. For this one, the answer is minus 7. Okay? We don't know the functions. We don't care about the functions. The idea is to apply the properties and that information that I have to solve these expressions. For example, the first one. In the first one, it says integral from 5 to 2 of f of x plus g of x dx. The idea is to give me the final solution to that integral. Since we don't have the function, we cannot integrate with the rules. We need to use the properties to use these values to get an answer. Okay? So, for example, in this one, it says integral from 5 to 2. There is no 5, 2 here, but there is 2, 5. What does that mean? So we can use, for example, in this case, the property 1 and the property 4 to change this or to expand this integral and then apply the values. For example, here, I have an addition. You can separate. So it's the integral from 5 to 2 of f of x dx plus the integral of 5 to 2 of f of uh, g of x, sorry, g of x dx. And since I have the integral from 2 to 5, from no 5 to 2, we can use property number 1 to change the limits. So now we have the negative of the integral from 2 to 5 of f of x dx minus the integral from 2 to 5 of g of x dx. And we have the solution for those integrals. For the first one, for example, will be minus. This integral is going to be minus 3, so it's minus minus 3. Minus, because it's minus, integral of g of x to 5 is going to be 5. So in this case, solution is minus minus 3 is 3, minus 5 is minus 2. So that's my answer. <laughs> no, no. This is not the function. We're not going to integrate this. This is the solution already. Remember, when you have a definite integral, the solution is a number, not a function. So in this case, this number, the solution to that integral. Whatever function is this one, we don't care. We care that this is the solution for this integral, so the solution for this integral is minus 3 already. The solution for this integral is 5. And then just apply the version that, that is needed. Okay, but when I want to integrate this, this is the solution already. Number uh, letter B, it says 4 of integral, 4 times integral of 2 to 5 of f x dx minus 3 times integral of 2 to 5 of g of x dx. <laughs> just multiply the numbers? Uh-huh, you multiply. You already have the coefficient, which is 4 times the solution of this integral, which is minus 3. Minus 3, which is this one, times the solution of this integral, which is what? 5. So, minus 12 minus 15 equal to minus 27. That's my solution. Okay so far? Yes. So we're just applying the properties to solve the expressions. We need to integrate anything here. Let's see. It says integral from 2 to 5 of f of x minus 3 of d, uh, d of f, d dx. What do we do in this case? 
separate the integrals, yeah. So we have two integrals here. <laughs> One from 2 to 5 of f of x dx minus the integral from 2 to 5 of 3 dx. Do I have a solution for this one? Yes. Yeah. It's what? Minus 3. Now, minus. Do I have the solution for this one? <coughs> Not here, but this one I need to integrate. Integral of 3, it can be done. It's 3s evaluated from 2 to 5. So it's going to be minus 3 minus what? 3 times 5, 15 <laughs> minus 3 times 2, 6. So 15 minus 6, 9. Minus 3 minus 9. That's my solution. Okay, so far? Yes. Okay. We'll leave uh, deep painting for a moment. What we'll do it there. Let's go from here to D. It says integral from 5 to 5 of f of x dx plus 3 times integral from 9 to 5 f of x dx. So uh -huh, the first one is going to be? Zero because of the property number two plus three times what? Integral from nine to five. Do I have an integral from nine to five? No. No, but I have an integral from five to nine. So I just need to apply this property to change the sign to minus integral of this one, which is ten. So it's going to be equal to minus thirty. Okay? Letter F, it says 4 times integral from 9 to 2 of f of x dx. In this case, for example, do I have an integral from 9 to 2? No. No. But I have an integral from 2 to 5 of f of x, another one from 5 to 9 of, <coughs> of x, right? Yeah. So, what are we doing here? We're applying the last property but <coughs> backwards. Okay, so for example here, we have 4, integral, I change the sign, so now I have integral from 2 to 9 of f of x dx. And in this case, for example, we're going to separate into, well, minus 4, Integral from 2 to 5 of f of x dx plus integral from 5 to 9 of f of x dx. Do you understand why? Yes. Why did I choose 5? Yeah, because you're kind of it double. Because I want that I have. That's the one that I have here. <laughs> yeah? That's the one that I have. 5 belongs to the integral from 2 to 9, so it's fine. We're just separating the each integral into two integrals, but using the 5 as a limit, because the 5 belongs to that integral. So now I can solve it. So it's going to be <coughs> minus 4 times what? Times minus 3 plus 10. So minus 4 times 7 equal to minus 3. Did you get that? No. You no. What part? The one that you separate the integral. Yeah. Take this property. If you have a number, what number? It will be any number. As long as it belongs to that integral, right? So if you have an integral from A to B, from that integral here, if you have a number that belongs to that integral, 
you can separate this integral into two or maybe you have no numbers but more integrals so my letter C acts as a what? as a limit okay so now in this case for example you have that integral and that C belongs to that interval so now you can have a first integral from A to that value and then from that value to the last value because this value belongs to this one it's between A and B okay this one could be a little tricky to use because right now we're using, using variables. When we see it, you see the application, which is the area of the curve, a little better. Okay? Fine. Questions so far? Okay. Now, for letter D. For letter D, we need to understand the meaning of a definite integral. In this case, for example, like I mentioned yesterday, mentioned because we don't have time for that. A definite integral solves a problem. It solves the area problem. Remember that? Okay. What do I mean by the area problem? Imagine this. We have a function. What function? Any function. As long as the function is continuous in an interval. Let's say that, for example, we have a function, uh, I don't know, let's say a parabola. Okay? And that parabola has limits. Let's say that you want to start at A and you end at B. And I want to calculate the area in those limits, the, uh, limited by the parabola, A, B, and the x-axis. Okay? This function, function f. So this one, for example, is going to be represented as a definite integral. So now the area is going to be the definite integral from A to B of the function f. And then when I solve it, then it's the antiderivative a over it from a to b, which is equal to f b minus f a, which is the fundamental term of value. So that integral represents an error, right? Okay. Now pay attention to this. This integral here. It says integral from five to eight of f of x minus three. Question: Do I have the limits five to eight in this? That I have? No. no, I don't. But one more thing. When I have a minus 3 for this function, what does that mean? The function. What happens to the function if I, have, if I have a minus 3 inside a parenthesis? For the argument. Eh? It goes to the right. It goes to the right. Yeah, it goes to the right. It means that this minus 3 transformation to the right three spaces so in this case for example imagine this function again that minus three means that that function is going to move move how many spaces? three so one, two, three let's say my function now is going to be something like this now this is f of x minus three but if I move my function I need to move my limits so now my limits for example here is no longer a plus a plus 3 this limit is not b now what do we move? b plus 3 so using that information can I solve it now? yes this integral is the equivalent of the integral of f of s from 2 to 5 the original limit if I add a 3, I have 5. The original limit, if I add a 3, I have 8. And the function is moved. I move the function, I move the limits, my, my answer minus 3. The thing I need to do is notice that the function is moved, the limits are moved. So it's basically one of the ones that I have at the beginning. It's kind of tricky, but again, using this information, just to understand. Y y todos los límites son del eje de la x. Yeah. yeah. So far. So far. Later we're going to see areas, but for uh, limited by the y axis.
that changes everything. That changes also the DX41. We will see that in like two weeks. Because this is going to and this is this. Yeah, and this, this function f of x minus 3 is equivalent to that function and allows it to be the uh-huh. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean that f of x is the same as f of x minus 3. They're not the same. The area is the same. The area is the same. Okay? Not the function. The function is different. You cannot say that x and x plus 3 are the same thing. No. But the integral, the area is the same for both. Okay? Do you get that or not? Mister? Yeah. Why do you subtract? Three units to the limits if you are adding a plus b and b plus b. No, no, no. But this is the original function. f of x, let's say that this is a, uh, and this is b. This is the original. But this one is when I move that function. So when I move my function to the right, with this function now is going to be a plus 3, and this is b plus 3. Mm -hmm. so yeah, but you're moving the gas. No, it's still minus 3. For example, if my, let's say, if my integral has a f of x plus 1 dx, but instead of being 2 to 5, it would be 1 and 4. What's the answer? The same. Yeah. Again, the function is not the same. The integral is the same. The integral is the same. Yes or no? Yes. Kind of? Huh? No, no, no. I, I just gave you another example. In this case, I'm moving to the left instead. So if I move to the left, my limits are moved to the left. Sí. No. Tiene que lograr una visual. Sí, una visual. Sí está fácil, pero. Bueno,
So they're the same thing. Okay? Si yo hubiera puesto aquí, por ejemplo, 0 a 2 también, pero con una función diferente, el área no es la misma. Bueno, en este caso, sí sería la misma, pero por otra situación. Lo de aquí para acá es lo mismo, pues. Pero en este caso, me refiero a para mantener el área que sea la misma, tuve que haber cambiado la función a la y lo mismo también a la derecha. Y son equivalentes. ¿Ok? Ok. ¿Ya mejor otra vez? ¿Segura? Poco a poco. Ok. Fine. Por ejemplo, tú en geometría, en primaria y secundaria, enseñamos a sacar áreas de figuras o de polígonos, con una forma, todo eso, ¿verdad? Pero se cuenta que yo tengo, por ejemplo, una, una forma irregular. Una forma irregular que, por ejemplo, que fuera tipo así, función C, por ejemplo. Tú no conoces una fórmula para encontrar el área que tenga una finalidad por una función C, no, no conoces una fórmula, pero con las integrales ya puedes encontrar el área. ¿De qué me sirve eso en la vida? ¿Okay? Desde cosas tan simples como paisajismo, por ejemplo, o sea, ¿en qué sentido? De que, por ejemplo, hace años que yo daba daba cálculo, antes 6, le dábamos un proyecto de áreas. ¿Qué hacían? Pues le decíamos, ah, pues tenemos un jardín. Y ese jardín está delimitado por dos funciones, una función, digamos, seno y una parábola. Ah, ok, quiero encontrar el área para poder cubrirlo de sacate, de flores. ¿Cómo lo voy a encontrar si con una fórmula? No, está medio complicado. Ok, tus integrales. ¿Conoces que uno de los lados es una función seno y otro lado es una función parabólica, por ejemplo? Usa integrales para encontrar el área entre ellos. Esa es una. De otro principio que vamos a ver después, y lo vamos a ver aquí en clase después, son los sólidos de revolución. ¿Qué es eso? Sólidos de revolución. Por ejemplo, de cuenta, tengo una función seno y lo voy a girar con respecto al eje X. ¿Qué va a pasar? Se va a formar como un tipo vaso senoidal. Quiero calcular el volumen de eso, pues con formulita está difícil, con integrales se puede. Okay. Gracias. Pero tiene una aplicación, como te digo, desde cosas tan simples como paisajismo hasta arquitectura o ingeniería civil, por ejemplo. O no sé, cerámica. <risa> Es un poquito, es un poquito más circunstancial que Mate 5, porque Mate 5 tiene más aplicaciones, derivada tiene más aplicaciones reales, 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 reales pero integrales, por eso se les da un trance de ingeniería. Esto realmente no te sirve tanto para un financiero. No. Pero para un ingeniero sí te sirve más. Para ver si ya no se hace bien. No. O sea, a partir de ese industrial, a lo mejor, yo creo que vas a ver algún tipo de materia relacionada con diseño de productos, por ejemplo, o maquinaria o procesos. Vas a tener que, por lo menos, ver esto. Te lo vas a tener que, que aplicar. Y si realmente en la vida real, pues ya depende del rigor de trabajo, pues. Pero de que tienes que tener por lo menos las bases de esto, pues sí. Ok, fine. Can I hear that? Okay, next part and last part for this is this. It's also an activity. The idea is, is simple. The question here is I, I want to find, uh, sorry, find the area between the x axis, the graph of the function, also this is not a function, but it doesn't matter. The graph of this. Expression and the vertical lines 0 and 14. That's the first question. Second question is find the definite integral. I just told you that the definite integral is the way to find the area middle of a curve and the x axis. Limited by that. But in this particular example, 
The first question is the area, but why is that? Because, for example, you can just find the area by looking at the figures. Mm -hmm. Here you have basically a line which forms a triangle, a line that forms a rectangle, another triangle, another triangle, another triangle, or a complete triangle, so to you, another triangle, and quarter of a circle. Right? So, in the first place, then it says, find the area. What do we do? Well, you can just find the area using your geometry formulas, in this case, yeah. So, let's try it. For example, here. Let's recommend them here. All of this is irregular, right? It would be better if I just divide <coughs> in parts. So, now you have, for example, for this one, an area 1. The rectangle, an area 2. This triangle here, up to here, Area 3, another triangle that I prefer to press here so it will be easier to find. Area 4, area 5, area 6, and area 7. So when I find the whole area, I need to just add them, right? So, for example, the first one, area 1. What do I do to find it? Uh huh, based on side divided by 2. So in this case, it's 2. That is 1 divided by 2, 1. 1 what? Well, we don't know. Well, let's put u as in unit. So it could be whatever. Area 2 is a rectangle, so it's 2 times 1. So it's 2 units. Area 3 and area 4, I'm going to leave it for the end. Area 5. Area 5 is another, another triangle, which is from 6 to 10 is 4 times 4, 16 divided by 2, 8 units. Could it be negative? No, because there is no negative. Yeah. Aunque, no haya para como es negativo. Ajá, I told you. No negatives. Area is not negative. Area 6, another triangle. 2 times 2, 4, divided by 2, 2. Area 7 is quarter of a circle. So it will be 5 times the radius, which is 2 to the square is 4, divided by 4 because it's 1 quarter, 5 units. Okay? Now, what about those two triangles? This point here is not in the middle. This point here is not as bad, exactly. It's more like a fraction. Is there any way to find that value so I can get the basis? Exactly. Huh? Proportional, uh, you could use that, yeah. But there's, I think, an easier way using algebra. Pythagorean theorem? No. Well, no. Because you don't know this value, then you don't know that value. Why not? Uh, okay, that will be one way, but I think it's a little complicated. Why not uh, using the equation of a line? <laughs> Can I get the equation of this line? Yeah, we have this point. This point is what? 4, 2. This point here is what? 6, minus 4. From those two points, can I get the equation of that line? Yes, I can. And if I get the equation, can I get the interest x into like here? Yes, I can. And with that value, I can get the basis. Yeah? Okay? So, how do I get the equation of the line? Yeah. Slow. Yeah. Y2 minus Y1. <laughs> X2 minus X1 equal to what? Minus 4 minus 2 minus 6 over 2 minus 3. Now what? Isolate X. Isolate 
isolate B, do you have Y equal to MX plus B, right? I don't know, B, but I can get the whole equation. Yeah, the Y will be 2 equal to minus 3 times X, which is 4 plus B, so 2 plus 12 equal to B, B is equal to 14, so the equation is Y equal to what? Minus 3X plus 3. Plus 14. And from that, can I get the x-intercept? Yeah. Y equal, y equal to zero. Yeah. So, zero equal to minus three plus 14. Therefore, x equal to 14 thirds. <coughs> no, Russian. ¿De aquí? ¿Me puedo agarrar el de Now, how do I calculate the area of the first triangle? Is it? It's a triangle, so it's going to be 40 minus, so 40 thirds, minus 4 times 2 over 2. So it's going to be 2 thirds. That's the first, uh, this is the base, this is the height, this is the number two, this is the whole area of the triangle. <coughs> for the four one, for the area four, what happens? The same, hmm? the same, always the same. Yeah, so in this case it would be six minus four ten thirds times four divided by 2, so it's going to be 18 thirds minus 14 thirds will be uh, 4 thirds divided by 2, 2 thirds times 4, 8 thirds.
Fine. So what the total area? You need to add this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this one. This one indicated. One plus two, three. Uh, plus ten, thirteen. Plus uh, ten thirds. So thirteen plus ten thirds plus five. Simplify that will be forty-nine thirds plus five units. Uh, yeah. Actually no. Actually no. Eh, de hecho antes sí lo poníamos. Si era este unidades, unidades cuadradas, sí lo poníamos diferente. Pero fíjate. Los mismos machos de profesional y nos dijeron y con razón que realmente si son U de unidades, pues si estás hablando de área, pues unidades de área. No le pones unidades cuadradas. Las mismas unidades. Ya si tuvieras que tener dos cosas al mismo tiempo, como una, algo lineal y una cuadrática, ahí sí le pones, porque le pusiste unidades a algo, que era lineal, que es cuadrática. Cuando son puras áreas, la U es unidades de área. ¿Cuáles? Las que sean. Cuadrado, cuadrado, cuadrado. Ok, questions. No? Ok, that's the question A. Find the area. For the question B, it says, define the integral between the x axis, the graph of the function, and the vertical lines. What's the difference? Again, like I told you, the definite integral represents the area. So the definite integral is affected by the position of the area. In what sense? In that, for example, for the area, all areas are positive. It's an area. But for the definite integrals, if the area is below the x-axis, the solution becomes negative. Because it's below the x-axis. Okay? So in this case, for example, this is for the area. For the definite integrals, the definite integral number one would be one. Definite integral. <coughs> Number two is going to be two. Definite integral. Number three is going to be two thirds. Same situation. But definite integral. Number four is going to be minus a third, not plus, because it's below the x axis. Mm -hmm. Definite integral. Number five is going to be minus a. Definite integral. Number six is going to be two. Definite integral. Number seven is going to be five. Okay? Solution at all them. So the definite integral for the entire figure is going to be now subtraction. Uh, one plus two is three plus two is five minus eight is minus three. Two thirds minus eight thirds is minus six thirds. Plus 5, so it's going to be minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5. So the final answer is going to be 5 uh, plus, no, sorry, minus 5. <coughs> Usually, to avoid this, later in the semester we're going to get the areas of the integrals. To avoid this, for every area below the x axis, we change the sign of the integral. But we'll do that later. We'll see the areas as an integral. But right now, the question is that every area below the x axis, the integral, should be there. Not the area. The solution of the integral. Okay? Question? No? Fine. Next class, uh, we're going to continue with the activity. We just bring the activity. We're going to work with that the whole class. So, can you do that? 9.1.